Hey everyone, welcome back to another Adobe XD tutorial. Today we'll be creating these amazing new morphic animations and buttons right here in Adobe XD. So without further ado, let's just get started with this tutorial. Now I also have an Instagram where I do monthly giveaways. So one give cool giveaway every single month on my Instagram. Go and check out my Instagram at Puneet Chavla official. So for the first effect, I will create a basic square artboard. You can create any size of artboard you like. The first thing that I'm gonna do is actually change the color of the artboard. I can select the artboard here, go to the appearance tab on the right and change the color from this pure white to a slight gray like this. Now I will click on E on the keyboard and it will basically allow me to hold shift and drag out to make a basic circle. Now that I have this basic circle ready, I will create another circle. So now I have two circles ready to go. Now the first circle, I'll remove the border here and I will change the color to this gray that I have at the bottom. For the other circle, I will make sure that there is no border, of course, and I'll make it much smaller. If you click on this fill tab here, there is the option to change from solid to linear. So this linear color gradient will appear here. For this color, one edge or one corner will be white. The other one will be a slight gray like this. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to pick up this gray right here. So now we have like a really light gray here and I'll make this circle much smaller than what we had before and place it right here in the center. So the one at the bottom also, I'm gonna give the same treatment, change it from solid to linear and pretty much have the base color as gray here, but make it slightly lighter. So that one end is slightly lighter and the other edge or other end would be the same color as this. Awesome, now that we have this set up, for the top circle, I will basically create just one shadow. So this will be something which doesn't have solid corners. So this will be 12. Um, you know what, I'll do 24 by 32. The, uh, even this is less, I'll probably do like 42 and 42 and I'll do, 40, I'll do 24 on the X, I'll do 42 on the Y and about, uh, you know what, 42 or something like 56 on the blur value here and also decrease or increase the shadow opacity here. I'll decrease it by a little bit. So now we have this raised button look, but it's not neomorphic yet, is it? First of all, I will create a partial triangle first. So one, two, and three. And I did this by just holding or clicking on P on the keyboard and just dragging out like this. Now we have something like this. I'll press enter on it and you can see these anchor points. I will double click on one of these anchor points on one end and just drag out these handles so that, you know, it's covering the circle quite, quite a bit. Now that you have something like this ready, this is now a line. So what I'm gonna do is uh, the size I will change to a good 24, yep, yep. And what I'll do is this color, I want it to be white and for and to blur it out to make it look like a white light is hitting it, what I'm gonna do is at the bottom on the right here, there's something called background blur. Click on it and I'll say object blur under this pop-up. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm in gonna increase and as you can see now how, how easily and how smoothly this is just spreading out. And it already looks like a really good uh, light is hitting that other edge. I'll probably put it at the bottom right here. As you can see, now we have like a lifted portion on the top left. And what I'm gonna do is just copy or duplicate this arch here or arc here. And I'm just gonna rotate it like this by holding shift so that it is now on the other end as well. This time for the other end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that it's like a dark, really dark gray so that you get like this really slight uh, effect that it's been lifted up. As you can see, now you have this uh, solid lifted up effect here, um, right here on the artboard like this. Same thing, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up these arc, this arc and probably put it on the top. And what I'm gonna do is just drag this white and just 
just make it smaller so that it fits the inner circle now. And I'm probably going to drag this out and make sure it's pretty much fitting this outer circle or this inner circle in this case. To add to this, I have this icon which I will be giving in the Adobe XD file down in the description and I'll make sure this is this icon is big enough. This icon already has this really uh, neat gradient which seems as if, you know, light is coming from this direction right here. Now we don't really need to duplicate. Now we don't really need to duplicate any artboards. I'm just going to drag out so that everything is selected and on the keyboard press command K or control K. As you can see, this now has a green border. That means now it is a component. This is the default component. I want a hover component as well. So I'll say hover and that's about it. Now under the hover component, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few changes. So the first thing would be to, to drag the shadow out from here, this gray shadow uh, out and certain, and also increase the size of this blurred uh, borders or this so-called shadow here so that now it feels that we've basically uh, there's something which is pressing on top and I'll do the same thing for this white colored arc here at the edge here I'll increase the size and shift it towards the top left just by a little bit and also this circle I will the one at the bottom I'll just reduce the opacity to um, something like 45%. That's good enough. And for the top circle here, what I'm going to do is reduce the opacity again, just like this. Yep. And also what I'm going to do is change the shadow of this icon and make sure this, this icon has this bright orange uh, shadow and probably increase the opacity of the shadow. Also increase the blur here to make sure that it's, you know, kind of spread out like this. Now to create a click effect, I will add on this. I'll click on this add state on the top right, right next to default state. And as you can see, there's a state three. I can name it to pressed. Awesome. Now in the pressed case, what I'll do, I'll reduce the opacity of the top circle completely, right? We have something like this. And for this, what I'll do is now I'll shift this white arc the small white arc and also increase the size just like we did before. But this time for this arc, what I'm going to do is reduce the opacity to zero. Same thing we will do with each and every arc here. I will basically increase the size of each arc and reduce the opacity to uh, zero. Now to activate the prototype, what I'll do is I'll click on hover state, which has already been set for us uh, and go to this prototype option here. Now under interaction, I'll click on plus, I'll click on tap, yes. And under destination, I want pr uh, pressed. And ease out, uh, I'll, I'll select one second, or you know what, two seconds is good. And under default state, if I click on default state, I wanna make sure there's hover, hover state, auto animate, and maybe I'll give this a timing of 0 0.5 seconds. So now that we have this ready, if I click on this, uh, play button here, see how it spreads out if I hover and if I click over this. Ooh, see how that really spreads out and that ripples out. You can make that a better effect, but in this case, that is how it's going to work. Now, the second effect is uh, rather simple. You need to create a circle first and rather than giving linear gradient, I will give radial gradient. Make sure that on one end of the circle, there's just this light. Uh, color and on the other end, it's a dark color like this and adjust it according to this circle looking good. I'm just going to duplicate this circle and I will give this circle a shadow. So the shadow will be 12 or you know what? 12 is too low. Why am I doing that? 48 uh, by 56 and on the X, I'll probably give it 42 as well or something like that. Maybe, maybe 32, you know? and place it right here. Now I want to make sure that the shadowed circle is at the bottom and that's pretty good. And I will duplicate this circle again and rather than giving it a plus shadow, I will give it a minus shadow. So minus, uh, minus 48, yes. And minus 32 on the X and about, of course, a positive value on the blur. And I'll change the color to a white just by doing something like this, yeah. Looking good. 
and I'll place it on the top left like this. As you can see now, it seems as if it's lifted up from a surface. What you can do is to enhance this effect, I will reduce the white, the, the blur of the white at, at least. So it'll be like minus 24 by minus, I don't know, 12 and reduce the blur of this white to 24 or even less, 12. Now, as you can see, I can reduce the opacity a little bit and there is this pneumorphic effect that we have here. One more thing that I'll do, just like the previous circle, I'll create this semi-triangle and uh, enter and double click to basically create this into a little arc right here. Change the color to white and give this a size of, I don't know, 12, you know what, 24, yep. And at the bottom, I will change the background blur to object blur, change the object blur to a higher value like this so that it's spread out kind of like this. And I'll reduce the opacity so that it doesn't, uh, you know, so that it's not really in your face. Looking really good, I'll do the same thing. I'll copy the same arc again to the others. So what I'm gonna do now is basically copy this arc on the left here to the other end and basically rotate it until I am able to perfectly fit it on the side of it. Make sure that the other arc is black like this or just grayed out will be good enough and rotate it until you have something like this and just put it right above here. Maybe, you know, you can play with the opacity a little bit to make it a little more believable and realistic looking. Looking good. I'm just gonna press a search icon here because it kind of looks as if if you press on it, it, it will basically search. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another pressed effect. I can create a hover effect right now, but I'll probably just stick with a pressed effect. I'll basically select this circle and I'll say Command K or Control K to change it into a component. Once you've done, once you've done that, you have to do one more thing. And inside this default state, make sure that you first of all duplicate this blue circle right here. And we will duplicate this circle once again. Yes, we'll do it twice. And for this one, I'm just gonna remove the fill, but I want a good border. So in this case, I want the border to be, I don't know, 24, good enough. And I'll change this gray to maybe a slightly darker gray or a black, reduce the opacity a little bit. And at the bottom, as you can see, we have background blur. I'll change it to object blur. And inside this, I'll probably change the value to a much higher value. So it kind of looks like a spread out shadow. I'll place this, once you have something that looks like this, what I'll do is uh, make sure that this ellipse is below the blue ellipse. So I'll just bring it down a little bit, just like that. Select both the ellipses from here on the left on, these, uh, on this panel right here and right click and say mask with shape. And as you can see, I have this little uh, shape which is which actually has an inner shadow now which looks pretty cool and i will basically select this shape from here and place it right above this circle right here make sure it's almost perfectly aligned otherwise it won't look convincing enough now what i'll do now is just reduce the opacity of this to zero so that it's not visible now in inside this component i'll click on this plus icon again and i will say hover state, that's about it. Now what I'm gonna do is all these artifacts, these little uh, gradients and shadows right here, I'm gonna select these parts first and basically reduce the opacity to zero, just like this, so that I don't see all these artifacts here. I'll also reduce the opacity of this search just by a little bit to give that, um, give that pressed look just a little bit. And under this mask, as you can see, we had reduced the opacity. We'll increase the opacity to a hundred, just like this. And also there will be an extra ellipse, basically the one which is giving the shadow at the bottom, this dark shadow, and reduce the opacity again to zero. As you can see, we now don't have any outer shadows, just inner shadows to give it that depth effect. If I click on this, if I go back to default state, go to prototype, and under prototype, I'll make sure that it's it's about 0.8 seconds or 0.6 seconds to get a better effect. If I press on preview, preview will open up. And if I hover over this, ooh, see how it just bends in? It's like 
I'm pressing this button literally right here. So that was today's videos guy. So that was today's video guys. If you like this tutorial, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel for much more every Monday and Thursday. Also like this video if you did. I will see you guys in the next one. God bless.